Hello, hello, sweetheart. Hi. Hello, hello. Let me just adjust. Like, I'm like literally cut off. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, because we're like half screens, aren't we? <laughs> See, well, we're a bit early, but it doesn't matter. So let's get the show started. Uh, well, welcome, everyone. Already to the 10th show of Morse Post by Vesa. I don't know oh. where the time went or oh. how the lockdown has been. It's crazy. Uh, uh, I have a very uh, amazing and special young lady as my guest today, Chanel Joan El Kayam. Is that the right way to say it? Yeah, Chanel Joan El Kayam. El Kayam, great. So, from further ado, could you please tell everybody uh, who are you and what fabulous things you do? Okay, um, I'm a women's wear fashion designer based in the United Kingdom. Um, I aim to empower women and diversity i'm all for diversity um yeah a bit more about me uh i was the youngest designer to showcase at the big four fashion weeks before the age of 20. Wow. And, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing so uh uh how old are you right now actually i'm 22 now I started my clothing line when I was 16. Wow, well done you. <laughs> Thank well you. done, it's like, well, well, that's only the beginning. So where are you? are Morse coding today from UK. Are you, are you locked up in London as I am, or are you holding for somewhere else? No, I am in the lovely countryside. <laughs> so, uh, sure. are, 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 you, are you isolating alone or with someone else? I'm isolating with my mum and my brother. Um, yeah. Are you alone? Oh no, you're not. You're with your partner, aren't you? I am with my partner who's upstairs, like, oh. supporting, like always. Um, uh, many, many, many of your followers know that, uh, that you are just about to graduate from the notorious design school Central St. Martins. Yeah. Uh, how has this um, COVID-19 outbreak, like, affected you? Yeah. And because of the graduate collections, obviously, like, we're not going to be seeing any amazing shows this mm -hmm. season. Yeah, so, um, so when they first told us that the university is going to close, it was more like, okay, pack your stuff quickly, the university closes tomorrow, bye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we were all just like, oh my god, okay. Um, and that was that was quite a shock, you know, like just like oh oh like okay. Um, and then I mean the first the first few weeks after that, I was quite upset because I mean we've been working so hard for what is it like five years, and then we're told okay the university is going to close, your shows are cancelled, the graduation ceremony is cancelled, and yeah. That's, that's how it's going to be now. Um, so yeah, the first few weeks I was a bit upset about that. Um, and then I just kind of, I just kind of took it in and was just like, okay, let's just, let's just do whatever we have to do to get the work out there. Um, and just, you know, try, try to do something. Um, yeah, so I've been working on the collection at home. Um, it's not it's not exactly a collection right now. It's, <laughs> it's a lineup, and then we've been told to do two outfits out of the six that we would have done, um, and then just to style these two outfits with each other, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, then we've been told that we're going to have this online platform, and they're going to push it to the press and all of that kind of thing. So on one hand, I feel like with this digital situation right now on one hand it can be really good because you can push it to a lot more people 
than a show in some sense because it's like you just click a button and it goes everywhere um but on the other hand everybody loves a show you know like the show's the best part of course because <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it's the atmosphere and and, and yeah. i just kind of, i just kind of feel so sad mm. you know towards you and and your fellow students all around the world yeah you know? Who are especially waiting for it because it's it's a massive pivotal moment for a design student or a student in general the graduation and the the hype around it and you know especially in mm. fashion it's like you have those stories that how you know John Galliano's you know graduate collection got bought bought straight straight away by this yeah this, uh, exactly department <laughs> store and all, all of that so but I guess I guess the the thing is. For 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 me as a as an ancient <laughs> fashion person, <laughs> like, ancient. <laughs> uh, already two decades in the industry to say is that you know if you think about like the great great uh, uh, Coco Chanel, how she created all of her legacy throughout adversity in, yeah. in, in during the war mm-hmm. and just found a way. So that's that's what I mean. Is like I think yeah. There's no, there's no rest for the wicked because even this time it will pass. You know, we will not be sitting here in our sofa you know, <laughs> contemplating. <laughs> yeah. You know, what to pair up with your with your like uh Chevy jacket and from uh, <laughs> pajama bottoms, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, I mean it was sad at the beginning, but now it's just taking advantage of the situation and just doing what you can really. I mean a show ideally provokes a mood it makes the the viewers feel a certain way about clothing about what they're seeing and it you know it, it makes it feel a certain way but you can do that with digital media and things but maybe i mean in my opinion i don't think you can do it as well no i mean no like like yeah. it's, it's it's a different way but yeah. i mean i mean it's like you cannot replace human connection with digital thing is never going to yeah. happen because otherwise we're going to become all like computerized like from Rouge. the sci-fi movies and just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Multiple. I mean, you know when um when the British Fashion Council announced that uh, they're going to do the shows digitally something yeah like um okay so like whilst we're in this situation that can work obviously because they need to do something and um, like you can't just get rid of I don't know Couture or Fashion Week or whatever. They're going to do something to show the work that people have been working on the past few months. But I feel after that, I don't think I think the fashion industry will adapt to like they'll they'll learn from this situation and adapt for future. But I don't think that Fashion Weeks are going to become digital as a lot of the media no. is saying. I honestly no. don't think so. No, no, because to be honest, like I, I have had a couple of conversations with with my peers about the whole. What do you think about like London Fashion Week going digital? To be honest, me personally, I'm all school. I can care less. Yeah. I, I don't. I, you know, like shoot me in the head or something. But I, 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 I am not going to attend. You yeah. Know, in a sort of way, I just feel like it's band aid. I, I know it's it's uh, important for designers to document their stuff, but I. I personally don't think that anybody should invest that much like time and money yeah. to put on that because it's it's just going to be a little just become a swipe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, so exactly. It, it gets a bit boring. Yeah, so yeah. I, I I think I think like in a, in a, in a positive world that maybe we're going to go turn back the times and go a bit slower paced and start doing more quality and then enjoying the moment because now we, yeah. we don't have that. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, I agree with that as well. Yeah, yeah. But, but, we won't take anything for granted anymore. No, let's say. No, no, no. <laughs> but on, on, on another note, just on a personal level, like, how are you feeling right now? Like, I, I, I bet you feel bummed. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I feel okay right now because I'm, I'm more like, like I said before, the first few weeks after that, like, hits. Okay, everything's closing down. The first few weeks after that, I was quite sad because I was like, "Oh God, no!" Um, but no, now now I'm okay. I mean, I'm I'm staying creative, and I feel I feel fine. You know, I'm in my own space. I'm in the comfort of my own home, creating things. And also, 
also I feel like now we've all got the time to think as well whereas the fashion industry like before corona was really fast paced and it was like every day something new every five minutes something else is happening and it's like oh okay I have this idea and then oh no gone something you know something fresh comes up and it's like oh all right then but but now because of what we're in um it's it's just like you can just sit down and think about something and take your time and create and you know i i like, like that actually like i like it that now be. Yeah, like it should be because there's, there's things in, like there's always a process. I mean, like in, in everything such as like trivial as cooking, it's not like your potato will not be ready in two minutes. You need to boil it for 15. <laughs> <laughs> it will not change. Uh, so if you want your mash, you need to uh, have some. Um, has, has this um, sort of uh, forced, like slowing the pace, has that changed your creative process, like towards your final collection has has it changed anything in, in in the terms of the the idea behind it now since there was this little shake up oh yeah you mean like the theme of the yeah. collection um uh, well not really because i mean so you went to my show in london fashion yeah. week and then i think some of the people checking in also were at the show in london fashion week so the theme for that was uh, it was about mata harry um she was the greatest female spy of the 20th century and everything about her was this psychological blur everything was just this imaginative imaginative uh, wait what's the word Imagin imaginative <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a character that's just made up like everything in her life was just an illusion kind of thing um yeah and she had this thing for men in uniform and you know all that and um and yeah so that was my theme for london fashion week but it was also for my graduate collection so i've got like a whole sketchbook and portfolio all about this thing um and i mean i feel like it, it didn't change because of corona because it, it's not do you know what i mean it's not yeah, really yeah. related as such to like you know this situation um but i think I don't know maybe what's changed is that is like how long I'm spending on these two outfits that we're supposed to make and um, and like the portfolio and everything it's it's like we've been given some sort of peace of mind to sit down and really focus on what we're doing and develop it in that way yeah, but, you like, <laughs> but, but what you just told me is like I think I think for for you to be a designer of, of such a young age, to even think about like that you do a full collection for London Fashion Week, but then you intertwine that same theme with your collection almost as an extension of that collection, yeah. which is something that I think everybody who is in the design world should uh, adapt in the sort of sense that, you know, because we lived in the sort of fast fashion with, uh, you know, ready to wear. Mm. Then we then we have a cruise collection, this and this and this, mm -hmm. and they're all separate ones, rather than cohesive. You know, almost like progression mm. of a collection, yeah. which would take a lot of the pressure out from the industry, from the individual, and also from the consumer. So hold on to that. You're very clever. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, how how does uh, an uh, an average day of Chanel look in the new normal? What oh. do you, what, how, what, how do you think you are, you are, you are cool during the days? Um, well, I take each day as it comes really. I mean, <laughs> some days I'm waking up early, some days I'm waking up late and I'm like, oh, well, there's nothing really going on today. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just, you know, find something to do. I mean, right now, this week, last week, the week before, I think as well, um, it was more focus on finishing the graduate stuff because um, we've got to we've got to submit it soon. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, before that, it was just find something to do, get creative, and uh, I don't know, learn how learn a new skill. You know, <laughs> yeah, because that's, that, 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 that's exactly what I was about to ask you. Today. Yeah, have you discovered any sort of hidden super superpowers, such as like uh, you know? 
a little um, Martha Stewart in the kitchen or <laughs> some sort of like how to fix a sofa or <laughs> You um, never yeah, well, uh, I, I've been looking, um, I've been going on these lessons on like how to make shoes and, you know, different sorts of accessories and things. It was just, I was just bored one day and I was like, okay, this, uh, I've always wanted to learn how to do this. So now's yeah, maybe the time. Yeah, but it, it makes sense because I think, I think what, what um, I always remind myself and a lot of people who stress about being in the industry it's like you're never ready you're yeah. never ready and you're never supposed to be ready yeah you know, because if you get ready you get stale and nobody nobody cares at all so you become like yesterday's news in the sort of sense that you know what's the point because you also have to always remember that you have to feed your your um you know imaginative you know like your mind because when if you get bored you know what's the point of doing it like mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll go and climb Kilimanjaro or something that <laughs> puts like oh my god yeah but like I, I mean like me as a person I've had so many different uh, different um, professions and that's the best part because then yeah one thing leads to another yeah oh my god this is so true I mean I'm always trying to learn something new to add to my skill set um because I think it's so important like let's say I don't know, let's say just a random example, let's say you're arranging a photo shoot and I don't know, uh, the photographer doesn't turn up but you happen to know photography yeah. or you know like the hairdresser doesn't turn up and then you oh you know that skill as well, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like it's always good to know so many more things than like what your main thing is. So, of course and especially yeah especially if you're in a in a position that you're overseeing a lot of things because that is going to be and probably has already been your life that you know yeah. you're a designer so you have to oversee things that's what i do as an art director and the reason is like like what you just what you described i've been in a situation that a makeup artist tells me like oh i cannot do a smoky eye it will take <laughs> 45 minutes and i was like give me give me your blush <laughs> brush and this is when and <laughs> and then I was like, Voila. okay, I was like, I don't need you anymore. And, you know, it's like it's 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 more about the sort of like, yes, I can, rather than why I cannot. <laughs> and then credits make up my versa. <laughs> yeah, but I like I don't even care about like for me, it's always like the end product is the thing what I care about the most. Yeah, I don't definitely. care about my own ego because if the if, if something looks shit, you know, it's not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, how I think about it. Um, do you see any positives coming out of this? Um, positives, yeah. I mean, in terms of maybe, I mean, there's a few things. Um, or like one, you know, at events and things, they'll probably most likely be much less crowded. And you know, events before it would be like, like five yeah, like... people packed in this room, and you would all be like this, trying to talk to each other. Um, that that's definitely not going to happen again um and then i mean i just think now everybody's learning new things everybody's digitalizing themselves in a way um and just everything about this whole process um i think people will bring it forward and adapt it to like when we come out of this do you know what i mean yeah. like i don't know how to explain it but like when we come out of this it'll be like how we were doing things before plus this and this and this and then i feel like maybe a lot of creatives will be like more advanced in a sense yeah, yeah, because i think i think it's like we all have those skills yeah but to, to you know, actually actually you know have a life after this you know i i grew up without technology before it was even yeah. invented and i come from finland we we have no Kia, for God's sakes. That, oh. that, that kind of thing that we even have to sell for. So, so, you know, I, I've, I've, I've lived through that and we have that skill set. And we, our life is not mm -hmm. going to come to an end if we don't have those things. No, uh, yeah. But I think the problem is that there was too much uh, given to all of us that we got lost in it. Yes, oh my God. I, 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 think, I think this is the problem. Like, we got lost in it. Like, just... Mm -hmm. Just the way that you said about like you know events being crammed is like how I felt for a couple of years like 
attending my industry events mm -hmm. for work reasons. And then I'm like, why is all of these people here who don't even work in the industry? But they just want to be have a part of it or get the free booze or whatever. <laughs> and it's like it's like I'm not going I'm not going to your graduation either or like coming yeah. to your house like, oh I heard that there was a free bottle of champagne here. You know? Yeah. So maybe kind of like taking the step back, reassessing, am I supposed to be here? You know why am i here why am i doing this do i really want to no i don't do i want to buy that no i don't and, and so <laughs> yeah it's, because because this is where it's gonna go to mm -hmm. yeah everything was too much before everything yeah. and, and like every honest, industry to be honest like i i don't know anybody like even if i think about people who i feel fortunate i don't know anybody who would have said that i really like that yeah. The pressure of, you know, what is my next Instagram picture going to be? Oh my God, I gained five kilos. Oh, I'm getting gray. Oh, I need to get fillers. And all of this sort of pressure <laughs> that nobody actually really doesn't care. Yeah. At the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> but but that's, that's, that's just like what I've been thinking about. Like even directly to myself. Like you can see I have curly hair. And... And I used to be like 10 years ago, I was a, a model with curly hair, but after that ended, I hated my curly hair. So this oh. is the first time. So thank you. <laughs> this Corona made me go back to this. And, and I was always so insecure about it. And I was like, why? No, why? It looks so yeah. nice. But that's what, I, that's what I mean. It's like, I think this is, uh, for, for many of us, it's going to be self discovery in the sort of sense yeah. of kind of being fine with the fact that, hey, I'm not <laughs> perfect with Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, did you have anything exciting lined up apart your um, showing your graduate collection before this crazy news? Oh, that was going to be so good, Bessa. That was going to be so good. <laughs> that graduate collection. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, well, I mean, I had some events that I was going to go to lined up, you know, big events, uh, red carpets, um, you know, everything that that I just did before Corona. Um, and then, yeah, another few exciting things as well. But everything's been put on a pause. It's like, mm, yeah. we can't do anything right now. <laughs> and we can't um, speak about it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until it's all revealed. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but then... Then if we can't speak about the future, let's go all the way back to the past. What mm -hmm. made you want to design? And especially because you you started so early. So you must have like there must be some sort of driving force behind it. Like tell tell everybody about like how did you decide to go and design such a yeah. young um, that's a nice question actually. <laughs> uh, right. So ever since I was little, I've just remember like since way back um that i've just loved fashion i've always been sketching ideas since forever um and then when i was 16 i i said to my mom do i need to wait and get a degree and you know like just wait for all that to happen i was like i, I really want to start my own clothing line now um and she was like do you feel like you can you can do it and i was like yeah, I think so. <laughs> like, <laughs> obviously, I was a bit, I was a bit scared. I was like, oh, okay. I don't, I didn't know anybody, like absolutely anybody in, like, fashion, makeup, anything to do with this. Like, I just knew nobody. So, yeah. So, um, my mum encouraged me, and she said, like, if you feel you can do it, then, then do it. Go for it. And you can do anything you want to do in life. Um, yeah, so uh, we went to get fabrics and I made my first collection. I think it was 35 outfits and yeah, so my friends. <laughs> Just a little 35 outfits. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, um, I had a small show in Manchester and my friends modelled, my friends did the makeup, my friends did the hair. Um, it was, you know, now when I look back at it, I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, my god okay uh, but um but you know like that's just part of the journey like yeah my friends helped me in that first show and then and then the director of manchester fashion week found me 
and I showcased that collection again in Manchester Fashion Week. And then from there, Paris Fashion Week asked me to show a collection there. Now, that was really exciting for me because it was my second ever collection. Like, I was like, wow, okay, this is, this is a big deal. <laughs> and, um, and in that show, I was backstage dressing my models and I received the email from Central St. Martins that I was accepted to St. Martins. <laughs> and I was like, yes, yeah, that was it. Uh, yeah, that was a happy moment. Yeah, but but but, but that's that, that's the sort of thing that a lot of a lot of people uh, kind of like miss the opportunity in life because they always think <laughs> ah because I can't do this and what if and it, it's scary mm -hmm. and exactly. it's all of this it's always scary you know yeah. it's it's like people ask me this all the time it's like how mm -hmm. did you do that and I was like I packed my one suitcase <laughs> flew from from Finland to here, it's like, hi, I'm here. I've done the same <laughs> thing with my boyfriend's to in Madrid, did not know anybody. It's just like, of course it's scary, but yeah. nobody, it's not, nobody's gonna come and pick you from, from your house. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. like, hey, here's Vogue. <laughs> I heard that there's somebody here. You know, yeah, no, you exactly. Have to knock on their door, so just exactly. like step in. Yeah, and even if you knock on the door and there's no answer, you, you just knock on the next door, like you just keep going, you That's know? Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and because there's no timeline. This is what yeah. people forget, that it, it, success does not mean that you have to be Kylie Jenner when you're 19, or you don't have yeah. to make your first billion when you're 12. Yeah. You, know, you can do it in your own time, and who knows, you might become bigger than somebody else. But you just yeah. have to do it for you, not, not for anybody else. Yeah, I mean, I just took every opportunity as it came, and I didn't... I didn't like, um, what's the word, uh, like I didn't just pass anything off as like, you know, like whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean, I took everything as it came and, and just, I just kept growing from there really, after after Paris I showcased in New York fashion week, which was incredible, um, yeah, I kept growing from there, then there was, I think after that was London and then Milan, so that was then the big four, and then after that I showcased in London each time because it's like my home, home yeah. country. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you never know, I might go back and show in one of those other cities again. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Why we, not? We, we don't know what the world is going to be. But what, yeah. do you, what do you see that, you know, in an ideal world, like let's not like think about too heavily on, on the current state, but what what is the ideal like um, career path for you now after graduating? obviously continue in your own line but what when do you see yourself grow with it like in let's say like the next next five ten years um so after i graduate i'm yeah obviously going to work on my own thing um i would like to freelance though at maybe a few big fashion houses like dior um Givenchy, you know um and yeah so i i would like to see myself in five ten years as inter like more international um, big designer and <laughs> and to open uh, fashion boutiques across the globe you know that's the dream um, and I would like to be really like I know I, some people have said to me that I am inspirational now but I would like to be like more globally inspirational you know like bigger than I, am. I wonder, it's like, what is that like? You are inspirational now. That's just like <laughs> that sounds to me like just like now. Like, do I have a new date or something? <laughs> no, I mean like you know, like I have my fan base, let's say, yeah, yeah. and my followers. Um, but I would like that to grow to be like much, much, much bigger. You know. Um, of course it will. Yeah. Because obviously, this is this is what a lot of people have forgot about like when it comes to marketing and, and sort of building mm -hmm. a business because now every, everybody's been living in this sort of fast-paced life and you know youtube and social media and all of this but you have to understand that even all of those millions and millions of followers that you have now who are let's say age group 16 to 25 they're going to get older the same way as you are oh, yeah. they are not going to be wanting the same things as yeah. they did 10 years ago so they will grow with you so mm -hmm. that's what yeah. I think that I'm sure that you are going to continue being inspirational for them, 
and their children. Because oh, that, that, that's I sort of, so. that's, that's how I, I, I always try to say to people, like, think about it in the long scale, rather than just like, sort of like the fast lane, because, yeah. because that's not sustainable in the long run. Mm -hmm. It's not like, like I said, like, you're not going to want a pink lipstick when you're 55. <laughs> Oh well, you never know. That. You never know. I, but I at might least, be like at least not in the same thing. Literally, four man. It has been a nice golden chic um, yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. Now I'm gonna give like a little uh, shout out to everybody who's following us. Uh, you see, there's a question box down there. We are in about 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna go to the interaction, uh, interactive section of uh, questions. So if you have any questions for Chanel, us to Type them in there, and I will check them shortly. Um, yeah. <laughs> but before we go to that, uh, what keeps you optimistic? Like, I mean, it's like because in the, in the, in this industry, a, a big thing that people don't talk about is sort of like mental health game. Like, what keeps you strong? Because you know, it's not an easy industry to be in. Trust mm -hmm. me. <laughs> um. I mean, in general, I'm a very optimistic person. I'm very positive. And I mean, I, I love the little things in life. That's just me. <laughs> um, I mean, right, yeah, fashion is a tough industry. But I mean, I am I feel like when I'm concentrating in my own lane and I'm focusing on what I want in the future, I'm going down that lane. I'm not looking at like, the sheep that are on the side of the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that sounded weird but you know I, what I mean because like, if listening. I if I concentrate on something at the side of my lane I'm going to get distracted and it's going to stop me and it's going to cause some sort of barrier you know so I think it's important to just have these goals and to keep to keep going like to reach that goal that end goal um, and yeah i mean i don't i don't really look at my competitors and you know all that thing i don't think i don't feel like designers are competing with each other i feel like we we each are individual and we each have our own style and taste everything like that and i mean i've had some big designers copy my my outfit like my designs that I've literally draped on a mannequin I've been like what like um and I, I mean I used to get upset by it but then when my mom said to me like well think about it in another way these designers are copying you and they are like global fashion houses um so you must be some inspiration even yeah. to them Ta you know like, what I mean? talent, talent, talent yeah. Ideas, they don't grow on trees yeah yeah but yeah in general I'm not I'm not looking at the at the sides of the lane, I'm, I'm just focusing on that end goal that I want to be there in 10 years or yeah. five years even. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I do. <laughs> but in general, I'm, I'm a happy person, like, you know, yeah. Well, but that's that's the reason like why, why I wanted to have you as a guest because I have a sixth sense with people and mm -hmm. I thought that you're like me, you're from the same tribe, like no, no BS here, you know. <laughs> And, and like that's 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 my biggest uh, advice to anybody who mm -hmm. wants to be in the industry is like always if you compete with somebody only with yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know, there there is no like if you lose your focus, game's over. Mm -hmm. it's, it's over. You have to overcome your own insecurities, yeah. your own things because nobody else is going to do that for you. Yeah, they will only help you push you lower or kick you out of the door. <laughs> so that one I've, I've noticed. So. <laughs> So like yeah. always like just be loyal first and foremost to yourself and then then to others because there's it's it's happened to me as well like uh, i've had massive um, like international like retailers copy my concepts no. one, one even booked the same model oh my god no and i was like oh, I hate that. <laughs> i'm like interesting but but then <laughs> But then you have to realize that even with, with every single great design that somebody copies or every single great idea that somebody copies, and then this person who gets ahead in their profession, the, the problem becomes like when people start thinking that they can produce the next great idea. And yeah. They can do that. So that's that's when I was like, I was like, 
<laughs> Bye. So that's what I, that's what I mean. It's like I think kindness is is the key in everything. You know, it's, yeah. it's all about having the great people around you support you when you are your toughest. Yeah. And also the same thing is like when you lift people up who help you. I think that is the best way in life and especially yeah. right now what we have to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's so true. Um, have you have you dabbled into uh, any type of like uh, even in a small scale like philanthropy or uh, helping somebody on one uh, on this tough time? Um, like, have you done any of this type of work? So right now, or do you mean like, like, right, like right now, or in the past, or has this has this um, woken any type of uh, uh, philanthropist? I mean, before Corona, I was very like well, even now, yeah. whenever like for many years, I've been involved in charity work, and um, and I have donated some of my garments to uh, live auctions and raised Amazing. loads and loads of money. Like I'll give you an example. Uh, Cordwell Children, I donated two outfits to um, to their live auction and raised ten thousand pounds, I think That's it was, amazing. for disabled children. And I was I was very proud of that. Actually. Yeah, um, yeah, you should. Yeah, to help, <laughs> there's to there's help not them. a lot of even older people who can do that. Yeah, um, and then I I gave you know for my just just gone London Fashion Week yeah. show. I donated two tickets to that show to another charity that um, they they um, basically in uh, in like third world countries some families have to give away their children because they can't afford to yeah. look after them. Yeah. So um, so yeah, so they're like orphans, but they're not really orphans. So this charity uh, gives money and help provide support for these families so that they don't have to give away their children. So the two tickets that I donated to their auction raised £10,000. Like two that's tickets amazing. to my fashion show raised £10,000. That's, so that's, that, that's really amazing. Well yeah. done. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I wish that a lot, yeah. of, a lot of other designers would, you know, focus on this type of good cause. Yeah, then... I, think, I think it's important to help others and show your support and that, that's just me as a person. I mean, when, when I was much younger, when I was in high school, I um, I used to be part of this organisation which we would do art with disabled children and um, help them to express themselves creatively. You know, it was it was a charity organisation and I gave my time to that organisation, yeah. uh, you know, to to help others. And I think it's the, the right thing to do, you know. I think more people should be like that. Yeah, I know because because it's it's almost like the sort of thing that my mom always said said to me like you can't buy a house in heaven. You know, it's like it, you know if if the or like even if you would have like all of the fame and fortune, but if you can't if you can't share it with anybody, or if people hate you for it because of the decisions that you have to make to get there, is it really worth it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not so sure. You know, it's like it's kind of like if I have like nice toys, I want a lot of my friends to enjoy the toys. Well, yeah yeah you know it's, yeah. it's not just like what what's the point because you know money comes and goes but you know mm -hmm. these type of things that they stay forever and people will remember you forever for those yeah and you can change other people's lives and that's priceless yeah I mean, <laughs> yeah you know where when when i heard that you know the money like obviously it's a big sum of money it helps it helps the children so much, you know, in their day-to-day -day lives and things like that. And it's just like, you know, hearing hearing stories from from actual families that have received the support as well. It's like you just you just hear it and you're like, wow, like I can't believe it. Like, you yeah, know. And, and for many, many it can be like, oh, whatever. But it's it's a massive thing. It yeah, really, like, it's such a big thing. to to me as being as a like lower class, uh, you know, working class kid, like ten thousand pounds is you know like back in the day like in finland like what what a person like a low like making a year yeah but i mean wow. it's, it's a lot of money like mm -hmm. it, I, it, to me it's not like that's like a lot of money you know yeah. I, I i could do still a lot a lot of things with that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things um, <laughs> yeah. when, when you see uh our industry and especially like sort of design going now like we're, we're talking about in, in in terms of the design cycle and fast fashion, this type of thing. So, 
fast fashion. Okay. <laughs> the topic that we both like. <laughs> okay, I hate fast fashion. I just think it's just so... There's like no words to describe how much I hate fast fashion. Um, wow, that's, that's going to be... On one hand, hopefully something will change there with the fact that all these people are cooped up inside these giant warehouses um, making clothes for, I don't know, let's say H&M, Topshop, all these yeah. high street brands. I mean, that I mean, after Corona, realistically, are they going to do that again? You know, I, I don't know. I don't think they would. But at the same time, at the same time, it's fast fashion. You know, the more people, like, I feel like a lot of people might come out of this and be like, okay, now... I want to go and buy loads of things, you know, and then these fashion brands are again going to get into this process of producing more and more and more and more, and they're just going to go back to their old bad habits. Um, I mean, yeah, it could, it could come, we could come out of this in, in two different ways. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I mean, what, what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think it's like, it's, it's, it's a very complex uh, topic. But what we have to understand is that, you know, it always comes from the higher, higher up level. There's somebody who is capitalizing a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of money because you, you're selling out a t-shirt for a fraction of this actual cost or yes. what it should cost. So when it would be a healthy cycle for the worker to get a, a decent pay and so on and so forth is, is the responsibility is there and whoever is regulating that, that, that should be addressed because these people, who are forced to work in these sort of like in uh, environments cramped up with minimum like below minimum wage have to travel hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away from their families mm -hmm. to even make ends meet uh it's not their fault it's not even the fault of the factories it's the fault of the people who commission these things because yeah. they come and say oh this one is going to give me like 75 percent off so they are forced in the corner and this is where mm -hmm. it happens Stuff. you know nobody yeah. needs that much money you know mm -hmm. if you make a billion or 100 million it's 100 million is enough yeah you at least pay your like, you know workers a decent pay plus yeah. we don't need that much shit we really don't need that much shit. well some people you know but like um yeah i mean a lot of people also associate fast fashion with china and i mean after you know all these um all the press have been saying basically that Corona was created in China. Um, I mean, maybe a lot of people would would not really want to buy fast fashion because they kind of associate it with China. Do you know what I mean? To, but to, I'm not to, sure. To me, that is that that is just propaganda in some sense. Yeah. Like, because because humanity is known for nobody want to take any responsibility for nothing, so they always have to find somebody to blame. Yeah. So in this case is again like surprise surprise now is now it's China and then Chinese people are like uh, pointing the finger at, at the black community and then the <laughs> other one is pointing at yeah. the when when people should just like look themselves in the mirror and it's like listen I think the, the change starts from an individual you yeah. know it's the same thing with recycling it's the same thing with shopping if we all at the same time stop consuming and shopping yeah. for Primark, there will be no Primark. Yeah, but you see, that's the problem. You know, with, with sustainability as well, it's like we're, people are trying to be sustainable, but not enough people are being sustainable. You know what I mean? Of course, so but, it's but, like, but, but it comes same also, with fast fashion. It, all, it also comes from the fact that not everybody can afford to be sustainable. Mm. So, so it's yeah, not just because of a choice, but it's yeah, because yeah. like there, there's such a huge imbalance with everything so the only yeah. positive thing what i hope even though this is very difficult times for everybody like me included it's like we are i'm not here like oh you know i'm swimming in cash no <laughs> not at all but it's, it's it's more about like trying to uh focus on the bigger picture yeah. because this like through through tough times you will always you know prevail you something great will always come out out of everything yeah every type of shitty situation and so most of the most of the cases you know you feel like you lost too much yeah and then you end up gaining more 
in yeah you see that's what i said that's what i said to everybody like well my friends in my class and you know things like that at st martin's i was saying like we're a lot of people are crying about this now but you know after after we have this showcase and we make the most of whatever this is you never know it might be bigger than what actually we would have expected from just the general show that we have every single year exactly um, it because might you're, be you're so different you know yeah first yeah to do it so why yeah. why why try to like why worry about the, the future when you're not even there yet you know yeah like see yeah. how it is yeah, well, just it, take every day as it comes <laughs> exactly but we're gonna go to the first question now oh is, do we actually have questions oh <laughs> we do we have plenty so, oh so the first question is what is um what's the most important thing you've learned from being a designer at this point of your career wait say it again what's the most important thing that i've learned from yeah being a designer? at at this point in your career like what is the like the biggest lesson you've learned since embarking into your designer escapades well like during corona did they mean no like in your career just oh your career. <laughs> what's the biggest thing that I've learned yeah like um, the biggest thing so the biggest thing that I've learned is not to take anything for granted and to take every opportu- opportunity with open arms and to appreciate every single person that has ever worked with me on my journey <laughs> amazing so then the next one um, do you guys think uh there'll be more focus now on quality fashion rather than throw away fashion which yes. is throw away fa- fashion i hope that nobody throws away their fashion we don't need any fashion <laughs> oh my gosh i love this question yes 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 so luxury fashion i honestly feel like this is this is the point where they're going to get like how do i explain it like you know how we were saying before how fast fashion is just probably most likely going to go down the drain and then like us the upcoming designers and like other big big designers i feel like this is now like our time if that makes sense yeah. you know what i mean like i feel like fast fashion is probably not going but but I, but but i also i also want to raise um a valid point like that many times goes unnoticed that you you have like um massive like luxury brands like Louis Vuitton mm-hmm. all of the, all of this type of like big 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 names you also have to remember that these companies produce in mass volumes so they are part of the problem yeah it's not only if it's great great quality yeah, but if true. the quantity becomes too much mm-hmm. we're in a problem because most of the Louis Vuitton bags in being made of biodegradable material <laughs> and then they put them in landfill sites yeah yes yeah. so true. so i think i think the like across the board my answer to that would be produce less mm-hmm. better quality less. yeah you know do if if you mm-hmm. want to be a multi multinational like a um, company like it was before you go to middle east so you have specific Louis Vuitton items that you can only get in Middle East. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, I like that. And yeah. in a very minimal like they can say, "Oh, we only made 50 units." Mm-hmm. Buy whoever buys. Don't buy. You know, I do that anyway. Like I actually yeah. do that anyway in my brand. I I'm, I'm not a person to produce mass amounts of an item. I produce like five of that item. That's it when it's gone it's gone like you know. Yeah, it's kind of like you spin yeah. the loops. You yeah. make it more <laughs> bizarre and now people yeah. are thinking like, "Oh my god, this new Chanel bag like this is a investment. Hardly an investment if uh <laughs> if there's three, another like 3 billion homes have the same bag." <laughs> it's not it's not the same oh thing as having a Monet in your house. Yeah. You know. I'm sorry to tell you but it's not like <laughs> that is a lie. If there's yeah. like five of that you have one then i say okay that's an investment yep. hold on i totally agree with you <laughs> yeah. so so like it's it's all about like you know i feel like a lot of people have been brainwashed into this idea yeah. that's that's how luxury fashion works it's like you like you remember when all of the logo mania is like i can't afford the dolce and gabbana 
X, Y, and Z. So I'll just buy the Dolce and Gabbana T-shirt that I can. So you buy into the brand. It's yeah. almost like the same thing. It's like why fragrance is the biggest, biggest selling point to any company or a customer. Yeah. So you can flash out like the little Chanel logo, even though you have no no business going yeah. to the store. Oh my god! Yeah, that's so because true. It, it's a state of mind, and it's like I always say, like brands have nothing to do with style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you you can have your your own great personal iconic style without zero. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, can you believe we've gone fifty minutes, and now it's the time for the <laughs> notorious quick fire round. Yay! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who can know? Okay, so how this works is like you pick one or the other, both, neither. The floor is yours. There's no okay. answers in here. This is like very sensitive questions. Yeah, <laughs> but with the twist. But better. <laughs> uh, rice or pasta? Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hard. Still? Or velvet? Silk. Stitching or pattern cutting? Pattern cutting. Madonna or Cher? Cher. All black outfits or all white outfits? All white. Oh, so good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm there with you, actually. Uh, Ballet or salsa? Ooh. Uh, Coca Cola or Fanta? Fanta. Uh, open toe or closed toe? Closed toe for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, ask me the, the pointed toe or the rounded is pointed toe. <laughs> like, there's no cliffhangers in your closet. Uh, oh god. <laughs> uh, Paris or New York? Ooh, New York. Uh, tweed or lace? Ah, this is so hard. Can I say both? <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Oh, I love both. Uh, Greyhound or Dalmatian? Greyhound. Mm-hmm. Uh, poison Ivy or Catwoman? Catwoman. Uh, block Heel or Pin Heel? Pin Heel, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> is that even a question? <laughs> uh, the Hero or the Villain? Yeah. Ooh. I'm gonna say the villain. <laughs> Magic or muggle? Magic. Princess or queen? Queen. <laughs> and that is the last question oh. I have for you. Uh, before before we're cut off. Uh, there's like this new new feature, like when you babble too long, my Instagram cuts you off. Uh, could you tell everybody uh, quickly uh, where to follow your amazing journey in the future? What are your socials? Where can we stalk you? Okay. Uh, and learn more about you and your uh, interviews. Yeah, you can stalk me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, it's Chanel Journal Kayam, but the username is CJE underscore official. And I've got my website, which is www.chanelljournalkayam.com. <laughs> and what else do I have? I have Twitter, which is also CJE underscore official. Snapchat, same username. Um, else is there and basically everything is cj underscore yeah, and I, actually, I actually uh, remember that i have one more question uh, it's the, the classic question and i almost forgot about it what is the first thing you're going to do when this lockdown is over it can be anything Ooh. the first thing that you want to do well that's a hard question because then there'll still be restrictions in place love so <laughs> but i mean if i in the ideal world to say like in the the ideal world the first thing that you want to do when this is over Um, meet with people like just people just need people (laughs) 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 I need people (laughs) just hold someone's hand give them a hug (sighs) just I missed you (laughs) 
Mm. No, but for me, it's like, for me personally, it's like put on my my go-go boots and party clothes and go dancing. Yeah, or oh, you know, drink, wear drink heels. Drink lots of vodka and, and <laughs> Yeah, no, I would love to, you know, go to an event and wear nice heels and, you know, look all nice and, you know. But, and I'm, but I'm actually waiting for to not to look so nice. To look nice and then look really damaged. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> but on that note, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, and, thank uh, you. It was fun. Uh, in uh, healing the world, like one more school at a time. Uh, I wish you a great <laughs> evening. And uh, if you miss this great, great talk, it will be on YouTube very soon. Uh, Stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Bessa. See you on Thursday. Ciao, ciao.